Welcome back to Bench Warmers, hanging out in beautiful Brookings with Tyler Merriam this week. And all this summer on the show, we are doing our Mount Rushmore, our top four athletes of the last 10 years at each of the schools that we cover on Midco Sports Network. And we limited it to 10 years. We thought that would be easier, but it's been a good 10 years here at South Dakota State. This was not easy for you and I to, to work, uh, whittle this down to just four. Yeah, I felt pretty good about the top 10, but having to go inside of 10 was challenging. I think we got a real good consensus at the top five, and then that four five mark was, you know, it's kind of like that one two seed divide on the bubble there at the NCAA tournament. This was challenging. There was some consideration for a volleyball player, yep. a, a, a soccer player, Maggie Smither, a softball player. We're all considered, and we Jake Winicky's not even on the list. That tells you how. That was a tough. That was a tough final decision. There was three or four football players that we strongly considered, and Winicky was probably the last cut. Wouldn't right. you agree? The one foot, yeah. The one football guy we did pick was Zach Zenner, and this was. I mean, you look back in 10 years, and he's not the all-time leader. Josh Roddick still has that record, but three straight 2,000-yard seasons for Zach Zenner puts him on the list. Why? Three-time All-American, uh, a guy who really changed the program. Because when you look at it, he was the one that was really the, the guiding light, the star that led SDSU from a good program to really being a great program. He was the one that, that set it up. And, and you look now, and no knock on everybody, but uh, the offensive line is better now than it was then. You know, Zenner was more of a one-man wrecking crew at that point. And three straight years of 2,000 yards when everybody was keying on him, just phenomenal. And you had love for one of the old linemen, Jacob Onisorgi, here the last couple of years. You thought he should have been considered. When you're named the Remington Award winner, when you get voted the best center in all of college football, that's uh, that's pretty high praise, and he deserved to be talked about. So I'm glad you brought him up. Yeah, Taryn Christian, Christian Rosenbaum also uh, honorable mention there. One women's basketball player, and it's the all-time scoring leader, Macy Miller, uh, 2,355 points, led the Jacks to a sweet 16. What about Macy? Never lost a Summit League tournament game. That to me is, says it all about Macy Miller. She was a winner and uh, a, a young lady who, uh, when she needed to take over a game, could, but was also more than happy to distribute the basketball. I mean, obviously played with Maddie Giebert, the best three-point shooter in school history, but Macy did it in a variety of ways. And just remembering back the last few weeks of her senior year, she just got more more and more comfortable in her own skin. It was so much fun to watch her develop and, and uh, she'll be a part of the, the Jackrabbits here in the future as well. So really excited to have Macy back and uh, uh, she's very deserving of this. In what capacity? What are you talking uh, about? She'll be working with the coaching staff. She wants to be a coach and uh, tried her hand playing overseas, and now we'll come back and be a part of Aaron Johnson's staff, and we're all excited about that. Yeah, she, she's unquestionably the GOAT. I mean, there's no, uh, no debate there there with Macy Miller. Basketball now for the men. We had to include a couple of guys, of course. Nate Walters was the guy that, as you said, kind of like Zach Zenner, when South Coast State got, really got it going at the Division I level, it was Walters that kind of led the way. All-American on multiple occasions, and again, put SDSU on the map. Uh, it was something that we often talked about, is that men's basketball and making that NCAA tournament, there's just something else to it. And when you talk about putting South Dakota State on the map nationally, that was what was going to do it, and Walters did it, beating a nationally ranked uh, New Mexico team, the win at Washington his junior year. So many memories of Nate Walters. Uh, obviously a great pro career that continues. Uh, he's as special as they come. Career assist leader, also had the school, still has the school record, 53-point game uh, back in 2013. And we thought that his, what, 2,300 and some points would never be surpassed. And then Mike Dom comes along and has an incredible, he had a good Richard freshman season. And then as a sophomore, junior, and senior, Dom was incredible. Seventh all-time in scoring, Mike Dom is on the list as well. We talked about it when Nate Walters graduated. We better enjoy this. We'll never see anybody right, like right, this. Right. And then a few years later, you have Mike Dom, who, again, obliterates every scoring record in Summit League in South Dakota State history. And just a guy who, who could take over a game. And where Nate was a little flashier at times, Mike wasn't as flashy. But my goodness, you just watched that ball leave his hand. And, and, uh, and I remember one of the assistant coaches, Ben Walker, telling me a couple of years ago, the thing that amazed him most about Mike Dom was he'd be in there with the trees, two and three guys banging on him. And yet it was so soft that touch he had around the rim despite all that physicality that's incredibly tough for a big man to have and his range I mean there's a reason why he's one of the greatest scorers in NCAA basketball history 10 threes in one game he's still the he is the career leader in three point field goals made free throws made rebounds scoring as well so uh, Mike Dom and Nate Walters joined Macy Miller and Zach Zenner on the Mount Rushmore for South Dakota State what's happening in the next uh, you know a month or so here for you as uh, we try to get back to normal at South Dakota State. 
Well, like we talked about, we're making a lot of plans and trying to operate as much in the business as normal realm as we can while we're not in the office. So a lot of Zoom meetings. I didn't know how valuable Zoom would be until we, Fun, huh? we started this a few months ago. Well, some people don't have to see me or smell me on a regular basis. They probably enjoy that. But uh, we're, we're trying to plan for everything to happen as normal come the fall and then the winter beyond that and all the scheduling and whatnot. So schedules are getting finished. They're in place. And, and we hope that uh, we can get through all of this together and that we can reunite uh, in this football stadium here in a couple of months and, and get back to business as normal. I never thought I'd be this happy to see you as I am today, Tom. Great to see you, man. Thanks a lot. Tyler Marion. We'll be right back. Take a look at next week on Bench Warriors.